But for many years now, Yu-Gi-Oh! players have always wanted to play online and play without the physical cards for lots of different reasons. Whether it be for testing with cards they don't have currently like some access to, or just in preparation for an event, or maybe they just don't have the money to play competitively in real life. To fill those requirements, there's been countless numbers of player-made communities designed to create online platforms that help players play online competitively or just for fun. Now there's been numerous different types of simulators and hopefully by the end of this video you'll have a better idea of which of the online simulators exist and what their strengths and weaknesses are and which one you will want to play with yourself. What this video is not however is a tutorial on how to download and install these or how to get it up and running or some kind of debate and argument between them. I will safely assume you know how that's done by now and have heard of most of these and it's mostly just a way to show you of what's available out there and what the strengths and weaknesses are and you can draw your own conclusion. Now starting off, it's important to distinguish the difference between a manual simulator and an automatic one. Players have debated for years which of these is better, Dueling Network versus YGO Pro, Skype duels versus AOL email duels or something, but that's not the point. I think it's important to just lay out what the advantages and disadvantages of both are and you can just choose for yourself. So let's begin with Dueling Book. This is the prime manual simulator and the only one of which that basically gets used in the mainstream. There's a few others, but they've been so lackluster and unsuccessful over the years that I don't feel they honestly warrant a place in the video. Dueling Book, previously known as Dueling Network, is a flash-based online simulator with a ranked ladder as well, which is really important. This is where you'll find most of the kind of known players in the community playing, and for good reason. Being manual and with a rank system, with judges as well who follow a set protocol, it generally is a strong place to play competitively on for practice and even for organized play. I find Flash to be a little bit dated and it really shows in the performance of like the actual website itself, but maybe it's just me, but if I don't enable hardware acceleration then the website runs like complete hot garbage, it's laggy, it freezes, it crashes, and even with hardware acceleration there's still some issues with lagging out and the servers do regularly go down for resets or maintenance. But overall if you do get past all of these hurdles and you aren't a streamer who needs to turn off hardware acceleration for OBS, that's just a side note. It's not that bad and it actually runs fairly smoothly. Now it goes without saying another huge advantage of Dueling Boot is the ability to create an account and log in from a web browser, basically anywhere. You don't need to download some kind of third party application or client, you just log in and you can go anywhere that has an internet connection, whether it's at your friend's house or an internet cafe or anything like that. Building a deck is easy and simple. You just search the cards you need, click and drag and you're good to go. There's a bunch of random cool options if you're into socializing or something with the ability to post a status, I guess is what it's trying to do. You can search for friends and print out Konami style deck lists, import and export deck list files over to and from YGO Pro, and there's also replays you can save to store. You can use them in videos or send to your friends and for me personally it's really good as a content creator. Now the ranked ladder is really good once you get out of the first couple hundred rating cesspool where MST negates mirror force and fucking Stormforth lets you tribute summon Dark Hole and yeah, so the upper ratings of Dueling Book are legitimately good testing and there are definitely a lot of great players up there on the top spots. You just kind of need to like push yourself to get through the low ratings who refuse to scoop because you played a meta deck and you need to wait 30 minutes for a judge. Generally I haven't had too much of an issue with this, normally people just quit when they see like a meta deck within the first like 100 like rating or so. So I wouldn't worry about it too much, it's it's not as bad as people make out. And like I said, when once you do start climbing, like you do play against really really good players. So onto the manual simulators, I'm just going to be like using Percy because I think that's kind of the most default one by uh, the community. Now there used to be all kinds of other ones back in the day like DevPro and Kaiba Corp and Dawn of a New Era and I think I tried to get Dawn of a New Era but it just like didn't update correctly, it just refuses to work for me, I, I'm not really sure why. Um, but they're all generally really similar and you can try it out yourself and they all kind of like just run the exact same way through the deck building process and playing online etc etc. Now it didn't even matter which one you used to use because they were all linked to the same checkmate servers but recently I don't actually think that's the case anymore and I guess Percy's current server Gideon appears to be out of function for the foreseeable future so there, there's like no ranked currently. But you can still host rooms and join other people's on Percy, it's just not a ranked ladder like there was before or like presently on Dueling Book. So I think that's a d definitely a disadvantage if you are trying to be a bit more competitive. Now DevPro was quite unique from all the other manual simulators but I don't really know what's happened to DevPro. There, there hasn't even been a Master Rule 4 update so I don't really know what's going on there. Percy is a really good automatic simulator and building a deck is so easy. I actually always build a deck on YGO Pro before Dueling Book and I just import it over because of how fast it is to just right click all the cards and then like alt click into my side deck 
is really, really fast and seamless. Now, Percy's advantages that I've mentioned already is the fact that it's automatic, so there's still plenty of other reasons to use YGO Pro Percy, however. So new cards are added to it within hours, like compared to Dueling Book, which sometimes can take weeks or months before you get certain cards. If you prefer to play on an automatic simulator, I would definitely recommend Percy. The disadvantages, however, is like the setup, seriously. It's like trying to buy drugs on the deep web or something. You have to go through a Discord server link and then navigate through the various uh, download links in the channel, make sure you download the right version for the right client, and then, then you have to make an account to actually get access to the download, or maybe that was YGO Pro 2. Um, but it's a very, very roundabout way. Uh, it's worth it when it's done, but it's it's still worth mentioning as it is a nuisance. And if you ever get a new device or if you go to a friend's house who doesn't have it, then you're going to have to like download it all over again, which, like I said, is extremely irritating. Now, thankfully, after you do download it initially, everything is updated automatically. You just simply open the client and everything is basically there ready to go for you basically every format and set and new card update etc etc the biggest problem i find however is that there's no rank servers and as far as i'm aware currently you're stuck playing versus random rooms being hosted and there's no take backs so if you ever get a bit too trigger happy with the card or misclick which is something that uh, i do quite often because i'm just really adhd with my cards uh there's really no going back and that means that it's not really great for testing for example and like when you're trying to test with friends generally you kind of take plays uh, back and stuff like that and try start again and it's quite tedious having to open up a new client and then set up a LAN and then stacking your hand in the deck editor and then saving the deck and then like going back to the LAN thing and then you can actually finally do like a test hand or test out a combo whereas on dueling book you can just simply like open uh, a duel add the cards to your hand from your deck and you just go from there and it's also very obvious when your opponent has a hand trap or some kind of response as the game will often pause for a while for them to confirm if they'd like to use their card or not. So um, sometimes it's a bit of a giveaway if you're trying to play on like a more competitive basis that way. So I guess that's about it for the manual versus automatic main debate. I'd like to focus more on some of the lesser known automatic simulators worth mentioning, but I guess the biggest contenders I feel were Percy and Dueling Book. So that's kind of those out of the way. So next is uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Nexus. This is a browser-based automatic simulator, so it's pretty much like Dueling Book, where you just have to log in and make an account, and you're good to go from pretty much anywhere ever. And everything I've mentioned about YGO Pro applies here to Nexus. Basically, it's an automatic simulator, it just doesn't require a download. You can just like log in on a website. Now, I personally really, really like Nexus. I think it's very smooth and very simple to use, and it doesn't require you to go through a million hoops just to download and actually get into the game. If it wasn't for its lack of a ranked ladder, I would be playing this over Dueling Book personally. However, Nexus seems to be a bit buggy, and with over 100 people watching me attempting to pendulum summon on stream, it would randomly stop me from pendulum summoning from more than just my extra deck. So sometimes it would let me pendulum summon from my hand, and uh, sometimes not from my extra. And yes, I did make sure that I had the right scales and the right zones available. But yeah, hopefully these bugs get fixed or something, or... Even if they're not bugs, I don't know, I, I feel like it doesn't make it very clear in how to resolve and activate certain cards if you aren't holding, like, shift or something at some point. Um, yeah, it's it's it should be a little bit more clear. And the fact that there's no rank ladder is um, really kind of detrimental to it. But if it did have one, you know, I'm, I'm just waiting for that day and I'll definitely switch over. Now, YGO Pro 2, as mentioned before, is much of the same problems as YGO Pro, uh, Percy that is. And they kind of count here for number two as well. So YGO Pro 2 is literally just the exact same, but with like flashy fireworks and bright effects if you're into that sort of like Hearthstone style card game aesthetic. It's just as hard and convoluted to download and honestly probably even harder. It's a total fucking headache trying to just get into a simple match. I think there's ranked, but I'm not sure. Like you have to enter an IP address of the server you want to play on, like Kronos or Gideon when it comes back or something like that. But yeah, all the information is in the Discord, and I just think, wow, this is so much shit you have to go through just to get a program to work. Now, if you consider the fact that there's a YouTube guide on how to actually play on YGO Pro 2, and it's 20 minutes long, that should kind of tell you that it is a bit of a mess and nuisance to get working. But if you really want the flashy effects, then I guess YGO Pro 2 is good if you can stomach getting through the irritating installation process. Now, unlike YGO Pro Percy, it doesn't automatically update you have to go into your actual YGO Pro 2 folder and there's an updater there that you have to run, I, I don't know, I guess like every once in a while to make sure that it's uh, all up to date. You know, compared to Percy where it's literally just open the program and you're good to go after like every session. Now, personally, I just find the graphics really annoying and difficult to look at 
and it's just kind of hard to see what's actually happening at a glance. And also another thing is that this is really minor, but as a content creator, the window keeps minimizing randomly. Like even if I have it on full screen and I click off the screen to like change a song or something or do something on monitor too, it just minimizes the window whenever I want to talk to Twitch chat or change. Like it's, that's very minor, but it's super frustrating when it happens every three minutes. And for me personally, as a content creator, I, 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 I fucking hate this program. Like I, I, I despise YGO Pro 2. I think it's terrible. So in conclusion, all four platforms have their strengths and weaknesses, with in my opinion, Wydra Pro 2 being the absolute worst. I, I just don't like it. I think it's clunky. Connecting to a game requires you to go through a million different hoops. The aesthetic is more annoying than beautiful. Uh, but like I said, if you really want the flashy effects, then I guess you, know, you might want to sit through that long ordeal of installing it. So personally, I don't think it's a competition. They all have their benefits and downsides, and I use all three as a content creator and player. They all fit my needs at different times. So just depending on what it is I'm trying to do at that specific moment, I'll use that program. And because of the fact that YDK files and deck lists are very easy to move around, it's not that big of a deal to just quickly import a deck list. So it's not tedious to kind of shift between them if, if that's what you're trying to do. I guess that's about it. Let me know what you think down below. What's your favorite automatic simulator? What's your favorite manual one? If you even know any others other than Dueling Book, I suppose. Which one do you use and why? So comment, like, and subscribe if you do really enjoy my videos and want to see more high quality production content, then please feel free to become a Patreon and support me that way. It means a lot. Thanks guys, and I'll see you next time.